South Florida, wow. by way of Detroit, Michigan. Amen. Born and raised in Detroit, we moved to South Florida in 76. And at that time, I got acquainted with drugs the first time. I didn't know what smoking marijuana would do to you. Nobody told me what it would do to you. So a buddy, a friend of mine that I, I kind of went to school with, amen, praise the Lord, had first gave me my, my first, amen, pull on marijuana. And I, it made me hungry. And then after that, it made me laugh a lot. So, I, you know, it made me feel good. But listen, one thing led to another because after being on it a while, there was a thirst to go even to something greater. So that's where cocaine came into the mist. I was already drinking. So cocaine came into the mist. Then the club came into the mist. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I thought that, you know, I was living the life. That I was living it up. And in the process of doing the cocaine, then it came out with crack cocaine. Wow. Now, wait a minute. Let me let, I, let me let me explain that that issue right there. Cause yeah. I want nobody calling me a crackhead <laughs> or calling me a former crackhead. The thing about being on drugs on. is God has to save and utilize people of that caliber, like He did the Apostle Paul. When God saved Paul, He anointed him, blinded him first, sent him into Arabian desert for fourteen years. But the Bible said that God saved him, then sent him back to the same people he took them from. So God has a plan. He has a unique design on how to go about, amen, winning souls or bringing souls into his kingdom. So you don't have nothing to be ashamed of if you did drugs or you prostituted or you was a gigolo or whatever you did when you wasn't saved. That doesn't matter. Amen. Praise the Lord. So that was the life. Amen. When I got on that cocaine and and then that, that crack came out. I couldn't smoke it like the rest of my buddies smoked it. They did it out of a pipe or a can or whatever. I couldn't do that. But the only way I could smoke it, I had to take it and put it in marijuana. And I laced the joint, and that's how I was able to get my high. So I did that for a while until I became miserable. And God began to pull on my heart. The Bible said that no man can come to God except he first draw. Yeah. Ain't nothing you can do about it. I don't care how much you try to get somebody in church, if God don't touch their heart, they ain't gonna move. They ain't gonna move. They'll end up being a, a, a religious hypocrite. They'll be the church. They'll be to the church. But they ain't delivered. So you really have to let God really minister to your heart, pull on your heart, amen, to bring you in the body of Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. And one thing about Jesus' church, you cannot join his church. Yeah, right. Nicodemus tried to join him. Yeah, yeah. Stuck out there at, at nighttime trying to join Jesus' church. Jesus said, Nicodemus, marvel not. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not, you must be born again. And we just thank God for all of you that is saved and have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on and give your hand a great big round of applause tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know where this thing bought me from. Amen. Praise the Lord. I remember a suicide demon used to visit, visit me when I wasn't saved. Amen. You know, all kind of demons come at you when you ain't saved but try to get you to, to end your life. And the majority of people today deal with that demon consistently. But here's the thing. They're not open about it. They're not, not, not open to the bishop or the, or the prophet or, 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 or the governor. You're not open to him about this issue. Yeah. You remember in the Bible where in Revelation where Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock if any man would let me in. Yeah. Well, that door is closed in a lot of areas. We'll let him in the front room. Yeah, come on in, Jesus. We'll let him in. You might let him in the kitchen or the dining room. But you won't let him go in the secret places of your heart where you have painted this picture like everything is all right. But God got your number. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm trying not to get too excited. So that's what I'm going to get too excited. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Listen at this for a moment. I'm going to put this mic because I got a big mouth. You all hear me good, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Praise the Lord. It's not, it's not recording or nothing, right? No. Okay. Thank you. Listen at this. Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. It's no problem. Amen. Listen at the reading of uh, Genesis 50. And we're talking about Joseph and a very prophetic um, decision that this prophet made. 
The reason why I shared about my needs tonight is because I'm a, I'm, an, I'm, I'm a licensed ordained evangelist. That's my calling on my life. Lord. That's why Bishop Lily Ministry does her ministry touches me that way because she's in a, more of an evangelist. Amen. To, to, Amen. to me, that's I've heard the minister. Yeah. Amen. So it has nothing to do with anybody else's gift or to the ministry. Uh -huh. It's just that that one in particular do something to me. Amen. So I mention about my knees because I don't know why today more people that you see, young young people mainly, that is caught up with this prophet title. They want to be prophet so-and-so. Yeah, yeah. And they have made it lucrative, like it's in a glorious uh, event to carry that burden. Let me tell you something, what I know personally about prophet, prophecy, prophetic calling. God is going to allow a prophet to become entangled with the feelings and infirmities of people. Amen. 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 Who would want that? My Lord. So I said that because I'm believing God that this infirmity hit him. So when he lay hands on these knees, all gonna be well with me. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know. I checked with the Lord. I said, Lord, yeah, go ahead and tell him to pray for you. I said, well, praise the Lord. Now I didn't. I'm just sharing that with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. About. Amen. Don't be too glorious about having a title over your name if you're young in ministry. Don't worry about it being this great extravagant. Look, just be a Christian. Just be saved and let God minister to you and he'll work the rest of it out. You ain't got to worry about all that other stuff. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us go on. In the verse uh, 22, I'm going to read real quick here. Amen. Follow me very quickly. And it said, And Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's house. And Joseph lived 110 years. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children, the third generation. The children also of Micah, the son of Manasseh, were brought up upon Joseph's knees. And Joseph said unto his brothers, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Now listen to what he says. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you carry, you shall carry up my bones from the hence. And Joseph died, being a hundred and ten years old. And they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. I want to talk to you tonight about positioning yourself for the call of God on your life. Positioning yourself for whatever God has got you doing in this church or whatever your call is in ministry, you have got to know how to position yourself. Amen. Here's a man, you already know the story about Joseph, how his brothers threw him in a pit and mm -hmm. took blood and gave it to his father and told him that your son is dead and so forth and so on. And later on the dreams came to him and Joseph <laughs> interpreted dreams and they came to him and said, interpret his dream and Joseph told him about the dream and he became the governor of Egypt and how God used this man in a prophetic way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Joseph became up in age and he said, the Lord your God is surely going to visit you. Yeah, yeah. He said, but don't leave my bones here in Egypt, but take them to the promised land yeah, yeah. when you go. Very prophetic that here's a man some probably three Maybe 2,000 years before Jesus Christ was even born, was given a prophecy of positioning himself in the kingdom of God. That's exactly what he was doing. He told him, he said, don't leave my bones here. The Bible said in Exodus, the first chapter, that there rose up a Pharaoh that did not know this chosen. Come on now. And as he rose up, he became fearful because of the multitude of the children of Israel. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible said that he designed a plan on how to minimize or destroy all the firstborn of the male. Yeah. So they sanctioned midwives yeah. and say, look, if this child come out and he's a male, I want you to kill him. Don't right. let him live because he knew that a prophecy <coughs> was coming forth that God was bringing a deliverer yeah, yeah. out of the land of Egypt. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Praise God to deliver God's people. Right. So as the story goes on, 
You find out that God raised up Moses. Moses became the great deliverer. And in the 13th chapter of Exodus, you would see that they took the bones of Joseph yeah, yeah, as they yeah, departed yeah. out of Egypt. Yeah, uh -huh. They took Joseph's bones with them. Yeah, yeah. Even when you get a chance, you'll see it. You'll see how God's great design plan for your life is prophetic. It, de it, 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 it depends on you positioning yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't blame nobody in the church for why you ain't, amen, yeah. excelling in God. Yeah. It's because you fail to position yourself yeah. that God can at least take you out of Egypt and just get you on the caravan yeah. and just take you somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. You can't blame leadership. Yeah. I remember times I used to be upset with apostles. He make decisions, don't tell you what he's doing, <laughs> make decisions. I'm like, well, how can he make a decision and don't tell me? Yeah. But overall, because he's the, he's the shepherd, let me tell you what a pastor would do. All right. Let me tell you what a real leader would do to you. If the leader really loves you, yeah. they're going to break your leg. <laughs> okay. right. If you ever watch National Geographic, if you ever watch National Geographic, I saw a caravan in Israel where there was tourists was going over there, and the man was in there, he was taking pictures, and he saw... Uh, one of the um, the shepherds, they was getting the sheep off the road, and one sheep was caught in a thicket. Mm -hmm. And he was over there with the stick and the wire trying to get him out, tapping him out, getting him out. But when he got the sheep out, he put the sheep on his on his neck yeah. and was carrying him. And when he got him back to the barn, he took his leg and snapped it and yeah. broke his leg. Wow. 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 The man said, why did he do that? He said, Watching about three weeks, what happened? Yes. The next time they saw that caravan, and they saw that sheep, that sheep was following that shepherd real close. Yes. Yes. Real close. Yes. Not, be, but listen, not because he broke the leg, but because, be, he because he cared for him. Yes. He showed him how much he loved him. Yes. Because a lot of times in leadership, when you get out of place, your pastor or your leader has to knock you right back in the So here it is, this man positioning himself. They got his bones on a caravan as they depart, amen, out of Egypt. They get to the Red Sea. Here come Moses. Here come uh, 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 those men that came up and rose up against Moses. Here they come at the Red Sea. The people begin to say, what are we going to do? And Moses say, stand back, see the salvation of the Lord, and take the rod and smite the sea. And the sea begin to part. And here come the, those thousands uh, and million children of Israel crossing the sea. Yeah. But guess what? Joseph Bones was with them. Yeah, yeah. They was carrying them bones yeah. over yeah, yeah, the Jordan, yeah. over, the, over the Red Sea. Yeah, yeah. When they got over there, uh, God made them wander in that wilderness for 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. And 40 years wasn't in that wilderness. Here they carry this man's bones yeah. with yeah. Don't leave my bones in Egypt. Yeah. But you take them when you go. Yeah. You got a position. Move yourself away from where you at. Hanging with the wrong people. Yeah. Getting caught up with the wrong clique. Yeah. I'm, I work in communication. I deal with Wi-Fi systems, internet systems. Yeah. Most young people will tell you years ago, before Wi-Fi existed, they had what they call internet. Yeah. All you had to do was take the cord out the back yeah. of the modem and well, stick it right behind yeah, your computer. Right. You got internet. Yeah. But Wi-Fi did not exist until later on. Amen. So some genius came up. He said, hey, let's take a router and hook it up to that modem and let's see what happens. Yeah. Boom, here come Wi-Fi. Yeah. You can be standing over there on your laptop and there go Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. But you got to have proper connection yeah. for it to exist. Yeah. 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 Okay. Me and my wife ate almost for a week at Applebee's <laughs> because ain't nothing wrong with that. Because at um, uh, what was that? Applebee's, right? We was uh sitting in there, and I went to pay for the food, and the waiter came, and she brought back the manager, and said, Mr. Robert, I'm sorry, we need more information, uh, because our system is down. And I said, what do you mean? He says, internet was down. I said, okay. I said, well, it's okay. I said, well, what is it? You want me to look at it? He said, you know about it? I said, yeah, I know something about it. He said, well, come on. He took me back there. 
And I went back there in the office and I looked up there and I saw the modem up there. He said, I kept unplugging it and it won't, it won't connect. And I said, well, you know what? Where's your router? I don't have a router. I said, yes, you do. I turned the motor around, pulled the cord out. I said, follow this cord and tell me where this cord go at. He all down on the floor, pulling the desk back up under there. They go the router over there in the corner. And I said, unplug your router. He unplugged the router. I said, unplug your motor. He unplugged the motor. I said, now watch, watch me real careful. I said, that second light, that's called a downstream light. That's your DS light. I said, it's going to blink on and off a few times. I said, when that light lock in, plug your router in. He plugged that thing in, you know, waited a few minutes. He came back out there, plugged that router in, came back out there. He said, man, you just don't know. <laughs> he had Wi-Fi. He was so excited. And God showed me a lot of people in church yeah. in ministry have that same flaw right now today. Go, 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 go. You try to operate without the proper connection with God. Oh, I'm yeah. telling you, listen, David said this. David said, I shall... Uh, praise the Lord with all my oh, heart. Yeah. He said, but my soul maketh her boast. Yeah. Yeah. This is the first time I read in the Bible where David, amen, God's prophet, gave a gender to the man's soul. Come on now. He said, his soul maketh her boast. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. If you got the Holy Ghost, when he, the spirit of truth, come, Jesus gave the Holy Ghost a male gender. Come on, what do you think going to happen yeah. when the two spirits come together? God desired to be intimate with you. That's exactly what he wants. He wants the intimacy of his child. Thank you. Powerful. Okay, let's follow this. Joseph Bone. Now we know where he's at now. They're getting ready to cross over Jordan River. they right there at the front, but God then took the life away from Moses, his leader. And now he done raised up Joshua and he said, every feet a land that your feet tread upon, he said, I'm going to give you that land. Right. So Joshua became the great conqueror. But they still got Joseph bones. Now notice this here. You say, well, Elderly God, why are you talking so much about this man's bones? Because they had to go somewhere. He said, don't leave them in Egypt. So they took the bones. Where did they take them to? Where was these bones taken to? I found out back in 1985 when I got saved and gave my life to the Lord. When I was at that altar crying, asking God to save me, when the devil was speaking in my ear telling me, look at all them people looking at you. You need to go sit down. And I remember taking one step and I got saved in this step, in this step right here. I got saved just, I'm, I'm serious. I got saved with a stance like this because the devil was trying to get me to go sit down. And I got saved and gave my life to the Lord. And then my first experience was feeling a real genuine love come in my heart when God caressed my heart. I knew I was saved. I didn't have nobody around me telling me you saved or whatever. I knew I was saved. I knew it. I walked home that night and got wanted to show my mom that I got saved. I remember breaking a leaf off on the bush and a little milk came out. Yeah. And when I broke that leaf and that milk came out, I heard a voice say, you see, I was there all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It is the simplicity yeah. of God. Yeah. 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 Oh, we miss him so much. Yeah. Yeah. We can miss him so easy. Yeah. In a, in a, just in a little branch yeah. is where he had hid himself at. And he was right there all the time. All the time. He said, I was there all the time all for all you. The time. And I just begin, I ain't going to the house. I just start crying right there by the bushes. Just thanking God. I had literally got saved. And, and now, now back to this here is now something had happened when our Lord and Savior gave his life to the Lord. But I'm going to get back to Joseph. But I want you to know how in depth you are where you come from. Thank you. One thing about us as, as, as church folks. <laughs> One thing about us as church folks is this. We know how to how to dress the outward apparel. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. You're gonna beat us doing that. Yeah. Yeah. But that is that has become a craftsman of hiding who you really are. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we do this to hide how we really hurt. We've yeah. been hurt. Yeah. Uh, right before we came to church, on the altercation you had with your wife or your husband or your child, or your child just disrespect you. So you dress it up when you come to church, and and there's a great hurt or a great cry. And I deal with people because 
I, I love outreach. I've always, that's where I got started out on a street corner. Yeah, and that's yeah. why I know I'm kind of like I am now because um, being on a street corner watching prostitutes and homosexuals, you have no idea how much the church, Jesus said that me you have not always with you. Come on, yeah. He said, but the poor you have always with you. And this is where I think the body of Christ is missing the mark. You see how beautiful this church is? This is just a sanctuary of worship. Yeah, but the yeah. true worshipers right. gonna be out there in the streets trying to be sold to Christ. That's exactly right. That's right. Okay, praise the Lord. Thank you. Listen at this. It's a lot to change your position of who you are when you approach God. You know, you can approach your leaders the wrong way, you can approach the first lady the wrong way. I can approach my wife the wrong way. That's, that's, that's a given. We're human. We're going to make mistakes. But the, but the issue comes in is when you realize you made a mistake, do you have enough in you to go and correct the mistake that is made? And I relate this to a woman in Scripture that you all know. And the Bible called her a Sarah Phoenician woman. Yeah, yeah. She, the Bible said when she came to Jesus, she said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me, for my daughter is at home grievously yeah. vexed. Yeah. Jesus looked at this woman and said, Woman, it is not me or it's not right for me to take the children's bread and give it to a dog. Wow. Now look at how he approached that woman. Yeah. But listen, look at what he called her. Uh -huh. He called a woman a dog to a her dog. face. Yeah, yeah. A dog. Yeah. But listen at what was happening, what was really happening. The woman was a Gentile. And she had no rights to the, to the tree or the kingdom of anything that David set up on because she was not Jewish. Amen. That's why when Jesus had made his disciples, he said, I'm going away to the Gentiles when he first told them. Amen. He said, I'm going away to the Gentiles, but go ye rather to the lost sheep of Israel. Yeah. But as Jesus got ready to ascend to heaven, then he told them to go into all the world. Amen. But at that time, right. you had no rights, amen, to the things of, 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 of King David. You had no right up under that ascendant. You had no rights to it. So the woman told Jesus when he called her a dog, listen to what she said. She said, yea, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Jesus said, woman, great is thy faith. What made him say that? You know what made him say it? Because the woman changed her initial approach. Amen. Jesus, thou son of David, that didn't work. Mm. But she said, but yea, Lord. Now, he was a Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Glory. He was a Lord. Yeah. So he couldn't deny it. Uh -huh. it see, David Kingdom had no bounds on that. Mm. But when she said, yea, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs yeah, yeah, yeah. that fall from the master table. Yeah. The Bible said he's, woman, great is thy faith. I have not found such faith in all Israel. You know why? She repositioned herself. Reposition herself. Hallelujah. Now watch this stuff while I'm talking. The Bible said when Jesus died on the cross, oh the Bible said his head fell in the locks of his shoulder, mm -hmm. and the earth had a heart attack. Mm -hmm. oh the God. earth went dark. Mm -hmm. That's right. The Bible said there was a great earthquake, That's right. and the Bible declared that it was unlike the world had ever seen before or now. Mm -hmm. oh but let me tell you something. Shh. The scriptures also clarify that in the book of Peter, 1 Peter, I think 119, if I'm not mistaken, the Bible said that, well, it's in Ephesians as well, that what is it that Jesus must first descend? Amen. Afterward, he ascended. Amen. Now, where did he go if he descended? Amen. He went to a place, I'm going to just say it this way, when Lazarus died, the rich man, when the, when the rich man died and Lazarus died, mm -hmm. Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom mm -hmm. in this place yeah, yeah. that Peter was talking about. Yeah, right. And it was called a prison. It was a it was a a, 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 a promised place that you can go to. Right. You don't go to hell. 
But you're in a part of Hades now. Amen. Because the scripture says that when Abraham was holding Lazarus, the man that went to hell, he was burning. And he said, let Abraham come and cool my scorching tongue. Yeah. So he was in hell, but it was another department. Mm. But there was a prison there for everybody that died loving God. Amen. Every one of them. Amen. Everybody that died loving God Lord. was in prison. It don't exist no more. That's why you have a problem with our Catholicism, brothers and sisters, that believe that there is a logos or some kind of limbo place between heaven and hell. That's a lie from the pit. You die in your sin, you go to hell. Ain't no way around that now. I'm sorry. To, I don't mean to offend nobody, but that's just a lie. I don't know how else to say it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But the scripture says that when the earthquake did happen, the Bible said many of those that slept rose up out of the grave. Ain't it prophetic that Joseph would strat strategically position himself hundreds of years before Jesus came and knew that his bones had to be in the right place yeah. at the right time yeah. so that he didn't miss the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's exactly right. Amen. And this is the life that you have to endure right now is positioning yourself. Right. You know, we, we this is an appointment we all gonna meet. Amen. You ain't gonna get it, you ain't gonna escape it. Amen. We all gonna leave this world. Amen. But don't you don't wanna die like a fool, die. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. Thank you. Positioning yourself that you can meet the Lord when He comes. It didn't matter. I love one thing I love about our Lord is that He never uh He didn't uh discriminate on who he allowed in his kingdom. Amen. It didn't matter. If you study uh, his genealogy, you study the people and their lives and the stuff that they did. You look, you look at, um, 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 and let me just bring this down for a minute. You look at uh, Lot's nephew, uh, um, Abraham's nephew Lot, and how that they bought him out of Sodom and Gomorrah, and the angels went down there and destroyed the city and so forth. And then you know the incident that happened when Lot, was in the cave with his two dogs. Yeah. And they got him drunk and yeah. took advantage of him. Yeah. But listen, you might not see a blessing in that. This is why it's important not to count your loved ones out, no matter what they have done. Yeah. 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 I want to give you just a little bit because we're yeah. ready to close. This is so important that if you got a mother, you got an all against, or a brother, or whatever, mm -hmm. it don't matter what it is. Right. This is the importance of being real careful of how you treat somebody in your immediate family that has an issue. Watch this right here. When them girls laid with their dad, one of the girls had a son named Moab. Yep. Yep. Is that right? That's exactly right. And look at Moab. Look what came out of Moab. They was a tribe, a nation of people that tried to act like they was with God, but they was not really with God. They went with Jehovah. So one day, it was a young woman by the name of Naomi. Yeah. And she lived over there with the Moabites. Yes, there was another, her two daughters-in-law that married, one married, married her sons. But her husband, Naomi's son, yeah. her husband, yeah. ended up dying. Amen. And so did the other two men yeah. end up dying. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Naomi said, well, look, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to Bethlehem where I got kinfolks there and the Jews there, Hebrews. I'm going over there with my people there. When she made that decision, the scripture says that the other daughter-in-law did not want to go. Amen. But there was a daughter-in-law that named Ruth Amen. that said, where you go, I'm going. She said, whoever your God is, that's going to be my God. Now, you got to understand Ruth, uh, her occupation in Moab. She was a high priestess. And she took children and she killed them and slaughtered them on the fire. That's what she did. But she didn't want to have no parts of that. Now watch God. Look at how God moved. The next move you see, when she gets down to Bethlehem with her mother-in-law, she meets another young man by the name of Boaz. When she met Boaz, now watch this real quick. Where did Boaz come from? Yeah, where did he come from? Where did he come from? This is where Boaz came from. The Bible said that when Joshua and Caleb 
had went into Jericho to spot out the land. That word got out that the men, the soldiers, were seeking them killing. Yes. So they went up into a brothel, a yes. prostituting yes. rig, where the prostitutes was at. Yes. And the woman that was in charge of running that place was was a name Rahab. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so Rahab had got word that they saw her, so she hid them up in the law. Yes. So she made a long scarlet thread yes, and took it out the window so that when they escaped, they can escape outside the wall. Mm -hmm. When she decided to do that, Joshua said, hold it. Yeah. What is your father's name? Yes. What is your people name? Oh. Because when we come back and we take this land, yeah. we'll save your family. Yeah. Yeah. And the Bible declared that just to show, when they came back, her and her whole family was saved. Yeah. Yeah. But watch this. When she left, they took over Jericho and they took her with them. Amen. When they took her with them, Amen. she met a man named Simon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When she met Simon, they gave birth to a child named Boaz. Come on now. Hey. Gave birth to a child yeah, yeah. named Boaz. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said that Boaz took Ruth up under his wing and married her. Yeah. And out of Boaz came another seed yeah, yeah. named Obed. 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 Yeah, yeah. Come on. Now. The Bible said that Obed yeah. got him a wife yeah. and gave seed. And had another child named Jesse. Jesse. Look at God working out. Yeah. Bible said out of Jesse. Jesus, thou son of David. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have mercy on yeah, me. Mercy. Yeah. So when you learn and know your genealogy heritage mm -hmm. and your rights to the things of God, Thank you. no matter what type of lifestyle you come from, yeah. my wife was sharing with you about my daughter. Let me just go into a little bit, little bit sanctuary detail. That girl had got caught up in that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. They robbed her right out of school, her 11th grade in school. Mm -hmm. She started disappearing. Fell in grades, wearing this crazy, well, I ain't got no gray hair now. <laughs> wearing this hair on my head, had me running crazy because that's my baby. Yeah, yeah, right. And she disappeared, she was moving, everything go, you know, I had to go run behind her fire and stuff like that. So one day, I, I pulled a hammer on her. I told my wife, I said, that girl ain't gonna run us crazy. Look, let's go in prayer, let's give her back to the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we went in prayer and literally gave that girl right back to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was able to sleep. Yeah. Only thing I said, God, don't take a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, don't take a lot. Yeah. But do what you have to do yeah. to get her to turn herself around. Yeah. And just to show, I started getting phone calls about 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Hey, Dad, how you doing? Hey, Rich, what's going on? Uh, nothing. Uh, I just want to ask you something. She started asking me scriptures about uh, things that God didn't like yeah, yeah, about yeah. that lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I told her, the scripture says, if God be for you, who can be against you? Yeah. I said, you know that scripture? She said, yeah, daddy, I know it. I said, what if you found in the Bible that God is against something? How can you be for it? Yeah. Come on, yeah. come on. Yeah. So she yeah. sat there scratching her head. You know, I never thought about that. I said, yeah, you need to think about yeah. that. Yeah. So she started thinking and understood the concept of God, how that God was trying to bring her out. That girl came to church, Pastor Wilhelmina was preaching, and let me tell you something, Bishop, I mean, the whole, I mean, it was like me when I got saved. Yeah. I'm talking about snot, spit, yeah. book, everything. I ain't care, I ain't care who wow. did. Yeah. Look, I got slayed, yeah. and the Lord slayed that girl. The same with yeah. her. Yeah. And right now, she got a beautiful husband, my first grand baby, and God has been blessed her soul. I don't know what to say, but I'm going to say But I'm going to tell you something. It's one thing when you give your life to God, but yeah. you really need to learn to position yourself yeah. that yeah. God can really bless yeah. you. Yeah. This is his desire. Yeah. All of our desires. I'm still, I'm at, I'm, I'm at an age now, right now, where, amen, I'm trying to do some things. I'm, I'm so repentant mm. because outreach is really my strong point. Mm. My it's going into a street corner. My that's, my, that's really my strong point. My but I've been neglected of being uh, on that job because the job I have it takes so much out of me. Oh, but God has blessed me in a, in, with a, God has blessed me. <laughs> God has really blessed me, church. Thank you, Lord. And I just want to share with you tonight, I pray that God 
Amen. Amen. Touch your hearts tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Don't yeah. leave yeah. your bones here in Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. But you take them where they're supposed to go. Yeah. 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 In other words, position yourself. Yeah. Don't be ashamed to get your leaders, call a meeting with your leaders. And in and, and, uh, an adorning meeting, not something where you think you're going to tell somebody off now. Yeah. I'm talking about a meeting where you want to do better. Yeah. I guarantee you they open for you. They want to hear you want to do better. I, I know what I'm getting. This is, look, you see how the, the, the absenteeism? This is everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't just, yeah. this is yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. everywhere. And no matter what you do, but it's going to take a people really getting back to seeking the face of God. I don't care. Ain't, ain't, no, ain't no other way around this thing. This Joshua generation that I hear people talking about, Joel said that that generation would be a generation that would weep between the porch and the altar. That's the kind of generation that Joshua generation is supposed to be. But, amen, our job as leaders and ministers, if the opportunity come for you to minister, you ought to have something to bless somebody with. That's all about. Come on and give the Lord a hand.